Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies bringing you another Kill Team video. This is on the beautiful new Ashes of Faith campaign style Kill Team box set that's being released from Games Workshop today, pre-orders today. This video has changed in format three or four times now since I began. I didn't really know what I wanted to do and how I wanted to deliver the content that was inside this box set. Originally, I was just going to make a simple how to paint the duelist model inside of it because that was my favorite member of the Inquisition kill team. And then I realized that wasn't going to be super helpful for a lot of people as pretty much the entire Inquisitorial kill team looks different. So I'd be showing you how to paint the duelist and wouldn't be helping you paint everything else. So I then switched format and I was going to show you guys how to paint three members of the gang. And then in the second video, I was going to show you how to paint the other three members of the gang. They were going to be slightly more longer format videos. Um, and after I'd gotten through the first three base coats and washes, I was quite pleased at how they looked at that wash stage. And then I thought to myself, what if I did a video based around the idea where layering isn't important in some cases? You do not always need to layer up your miniatures. What if you just got really nice, neat base coats and a wash on your model and got them based up nicely? They would look like stunning tabletop standard miniatures. It would save you a whole heap of time and help you churn through your backlog. So I went from being able to show you guys how to paint one guy in one video to showing you how to paint all seven members of the kill team in a single video. Um, I hope you guys like the result. Let me know what you think about the idea in the comments below. Um, I would love to know your thoughts and feelings on this. Um, a lot of us do side projects or pick up extra games like Kill Team or War Cry and stuff. And we don't really have as much time to focus on them as we would our mainstay game or main armies that we're working on. So getting these quick and easy and accessible paint schemes just to bash them out treat them like board game pieces and get us playing kill team really fast i think is kind of a good idea well like i said let me know in the comments i'd really like to know what you guys think of that okay before i get into it a huge thank you to all of my active patrons without you guys i would not be able to continue doing what i'm doing and this crazy journey would crash to a catastrophic halt so a huge thank you to you guys if you're interested in joining in in that uh, patreon family there's links to it below uh you get access to things like a private discord server where you can hang out with me on a daily basis and talk hobby and you get access to an extra video every single week so that's 52 extra videos a year just for you guys okay that's enough yammering let's get to paint and kill team okay so i'm gonna start off with this warband with my favorite one which is the kind of pistolary the the dual wielding um it's very kind of space cowboy and i'm very much here for space cowboy uh, she is a gunslinger. She carries a scoped plasma pistol in one hand and a silenced auto pistol in the other. I love it. All the models were sprayed black and then given a zenithal spray of grey seer, all with Ralkan. Flesh Tears Red was my first colour of choice and that was for her robes. I wanted to take my time and get a nice, even, smooth coat of this contrast across all of her robes, including hood, chest, and all that kind of bits and pieces. So these particular robes are very much covered in gold filigree, um, which is okay. So you can basically paint the entire robe in gold because gold paints better over red than it does white anyway. So paint all the detail red, it doesn't matter. When we got back over it with gold later on, you'll think. I do like to try and stay neat with my contrast and see I haven't really hit anything that I'm not supposed to. It just makes it easier for kind of blocking out colors. And because um, contrast isn't completely opaque, um, other colors bleeding through can cause kind of stains and stuff that you don't want to see. Black Templar contrast was then brought in for her belts, straps, holsters, um, all those kind of bits and pieces on the miniature and the casing of the silenced auto pistol as well, including her military boots and her armor and bits and pieces like that. They all got done with a coat of Black Templar careful like I said not like I said when I started making this video originally I was just going to paint up the duelist here or the, the gunslinger here as a single miniature but then I decided to go ahead and push myself a little further so hopefully you guys like how I did this from here we moved over to lead belcher and applied this to all of the metallic parts on this model so all the entire gun, her bionic arm, uh, her pistol, her shoulder pad, all of it. Lots of this will have gold trim, uh, which we'll be moving over to in a moment. But it's okay to cover it in silver paint first and then just paint the trim gold after that. It speeds up the process of applying the silver. And that's what this uh, video is all about. Getting this warband painted up quickly, efficiently, and getting it on the tabletop as soon as possible, looking nice. 
you can always go back and add extra detail to it later on but i am curious to see what you guys think of them as the tabletop standard i present at the very end of the video i think they're quite cool so retributor armor gold was then brought in and all of that trim was painted on the robes guns weapons armor all those bits and pieces that are supposed to be gold i did have reference pictures pulled up for all of this so i was kind of trying to stay as close to the actual um heavy metal style painting guide as possible for colors that is not for the actual technique as you can see a fine pointed brush and uh, a bit of patience just to make sure you get those nice nice lines on the trim of the cloth and all of the armor this is the motif going up her chest as well it's like a half aquila it's a very cool uniform to be honest So there's basically three or four arguably miniatures in the kill team that share very similar color schemes to this. So as I was working up her, I painted up them as well. So using the same colors I used, I just applied the red, black, gold, silver to all the places that they're supposed to be. Very quick, very simple, very effective. So basically got the base coats done on three of them. But of course they will diverge in colors in some aspects. One of the most obvious ones will be the skin tones. So two of the models are very much sculpted with Caucasian features, but one of them is black features. So of course, I'm not going to whitewash the miniature. So I'm going to use the uh, Gulliman and flesh on the two Caucasian faces and then a dark oath flesh, which is the darkest uh, contrast paint and works as a nice base coat for doing darker skin tones. This is the one with the darker features. Like I said, moving over the darker flesh for that. And there's not a lot of skin showing on these miniatures, so it only takes a couple of seconds to get these base coats on. Like I said, being as controlled as possible, not to hit any of the areas we don't want it to be. We then came in with Agros Dunes and applied that to things like candles and parchment and skulls. They're beautiful base coat for all of these kinds of features on the miniature. On this one, there's obviously the parchment on his actual book. So the book itself was red and gold, but if we put the egg roast dunes through the spine and actually kind of age up the pages, it works perfect. Okay, with all of those base coats applied, it's now time to shade the miniature. And just like with every model in this entire warband, I'm gonna just throw Nolan oil over the entire miniature. It's gonna beautifully darken down all the metallics, all the reds, the golds, everything. It's gonna leave it as a really nice point. If you ever decide to layer up again, it's perfect. If not, it's totally fine. I promise you, you stick around to the end and check out the results of the finished warband. I think you will like the results as it stands. So I applied this Nolan oil shade to all three of these miniatures, and then I moved on to the next member of the warband. The next member of the warband being the Scribe Scrivener Man, who is the fourth member of, um, that shares a very similar palette um, to these models, but it's a very different model, so I decided I'd take my time and go through that in a bit more detail. But like I said, it's Flesh Tears Red, same as before, on the robes careful i almost missed that the robes aren't just from the waist down his stomach and the small of his back is also uh some of the robe material so make sure you get all that in differences in this kind of miniature is that the rest of the models had that kind of gold filigree running down the seams of their cloak this guy does not have that with the red applied we moved over to lead belcher and a lot of this miniature is the silver so you want to take your time and make sure you paint in pretty much everything with that silver tone now I have his scroll that is actually working on um, blue tack to a separate little um, kind of cocktail stick thing that I'm painting up as I go along. And before the Nolan Oil stage, all we're going to do is apply gold to the edges and Agaros dunes to the front, to the paper, and that's all. And shade it black. So nothing crazy, uh, but I'm not going to record it and show it to you guys, which take more time. There's already longer video than normal. So the Retributor Armor Gold is going to be used to kind of um, add some trim to him. So his armor is all trimmed up. So make sure you, like I said, find pointed brush and paint around all of those areas. And then all of the scrolls hanging off them, the actual ends of the scrolls are kind of ornate and done in gold. So you want to make sure you go around and get all of those details as well. And then on all of his four servo arms, add a little bit of a gold trim to those two. This guy's obviously quite an important thing or self-imposed important thing. So he's uh, got a little bit of bling to him. 
Rattling Grime was then brought in for the belt and all the little loops that are holding those um, scrolls onto his belt. And then I also painted this in behind the head of the miniature. So it basically his head is basically floating on a pile of cables. Um, so I just basically forced the brush back behind that and fill that in with um, the Rattling Grime paint. It's a dark paint, it'll act like nice shadow, no real detail needed um, and saves it from just being that plain white color. I threw Gulliman Flesh over his face. Agroth's Dunes was then used for all of the actual parchment parts of the scrolls. Like I said, quick and easy steps. Like none of these steps that I've shown you on any of these models so far has taken longer than a minute. And like I've said in the intro, there's so many different projects we all want to be digging in and out of. And I know this is um, going to be a popular one for a lot of people. We've wanted an Inquisitorial Warband in Plastic for a long time. So having access to one is great. And I, I know I wanted to get this uh, gang painted up as quick as possible and get some games in and see how the new campaign system works for Kill Team. But obviously this box set trades scenery for quantity of miniatures. So even though I've managed to get this warband done in a couple of hours, I still have a squad of scions, squad of sisters of silence, a whole heap of chaos miniatures and mutants. Now if you want to get every single miniature in that box painted up uh, quickly, then schemes like this I think is, is what's going to help you do that. All right, on to the gun server now. We're going to start with Rattling Guy, and that's going to be for his undersuit. So basically his boiler suit or work overalls or whatever you want to call them. We want to hit that with rattling grime. Nice and dark, but not too dark, not jet black. We want it to look like a working suit. And then on the box art, this guy had like kind of like cream armor. I decided to veer away from that just a little bit. I like the idea of the kind of like JCB colors. This thing was an old work servitor. Uh, maybe the Inquisitor requisitioned it one day and never really gave it back. Um, so I went in with Nasdreg Yellow and applied this to all of the armor panels. Now, at this stage, I applied Nasdreg Yellow. You can choose any color you want if you want to change up the color of your gun server. If you want it to be red, add a red color. If you want it to be green, green, blue, blue, whatever you want to do. Grab the appropriate contrast and apply it to the, the places where I'm applying the Nasdreg Yellow on this guy. Which is more places than you'd think. Half his head is also done in at the casing of his plasma cannon, which you can also build as a heavy bolter or a melt gun if you so choose. Dark Oath Flesh was thrown over his skin, which is his left arm to the wrist, and a small portion of his head that's not covered in bionics was done with the Dark Oath Flesh. Black Templar was then brought back in for his boots, and some of the cabling. Um, that snakes around his body. So those kind of soft seal um, cables. I was planning on doing most of the metallics, but I thought that might be a little bit too many metallic silver pipes. So I decided to just throw uh, a couple of them in with Black Templar, which I think helped break up the model a little bit more. Then it's time to move over to that lead belcher and apply that to basically the rest of the model that hasn't been painted yet. So the rest of those cables his um, bionic clamp hand, um, and then the rest of the plasma cannon minus the coils. So just leave those coils that white color, because later on I'm gonna throw a nice contrast over them and make it look like blue plasma. I do actually quite enjoy painting this gun server, and I wouldn't mind if they brought out more of these guys in the future so we could have some plastic servers to go with my Primaris Tech Marine that I did a few uh, weeks or months ago now. And of course with him all base coated up, it was time just like the rest to throw his uh, shade on, which like I said at the beginning was going to be null null for them all. This will keep a very um, similar tone throughout all of the miniatures and make it feel like a kind of a universal gang, even though uh, some of them are vastly different in color, shape and size. Okay, on to the Death Worlder, which I think is a lot of people's favorite. He harks back to an old Inquisitor miniature. And by Inquisitor, I mean the old, I don't know whether it's 54 or 75 millimeter game system that Games Workshop used to do, basically larger scale miniatures. And this guy is basically a copy of one of those and brought back into life. So we started with a Plague Bear Flesh for his uh, like vest, his t-shirt thing that he's wearing. 
Obviously, I'm trying not to hit any of the straps or knives. This guy is blinged out in a very different way to the rest of them, and that's with uh, sharp edged weapons. I think he has four or five knives or bladed weapons on his person, which I am here for. I love it. I also gave that little bit of a shoulder armor that he has, the Plague Bear Flesh. After that, I went on to Militarum Green for his combat pants or trousers, depending on where you were in the world. Trousers is what I should have said first because I'm in Ireland. But once again, like I said, being careful not to hit any of the belts or that loincloth thing that he has, which is the only part of the model that I'm not a huge fan of. I wish the loincloth wasn't there. I think he would look a little bit more militaristic then. Wildwood was then used for all of his belts, straps, sheaths for knives. Um, like I said, there's quite a lot of them, so take your time and find them all. I did, once again, go to the Warmer Community site and pull up a reference image um, that they shared. But for you guys, when you're seeing this, there'll be 360 versions of him on the Games Workshop website. If you don't know what I mean by that, when you look up Ashes of Faith on the Games Workshop website, it will pop up. And each individual miniature will have a, like, you can drag your mouse across and rotate it around and look at all the different angles. Which is great for painters, for helping you guys um, find where all the colors are supposed to go. Black Templar was then brought in for his boots. Not much else, to be honest. His gloves were also done in that, sorry. But his gloves are also brown and black, so some of them will be uh, that Wildwood stage we did before, and then some of them will be black. Agros Dunes was used for that loincloth I was talking about. One simple coat. Making sure to turn the model around and get in between his legs to get the back of the loincloth as well. A lot of people always forget about doing that on all miniatures. Gullum and Flesh was used. Now this is an interesting one because you've got to get the bits of his arm that are showing his head. And then for some reason he's got a severed hand on his belt on the back of the miniature. Um, somebody annoyed him and he took their hand. So uh, that's there as well. So give that a coat of Gullum and Flesh. Time's more over to the metallics. So we're going to start with Lead Belcher. This is basically for all the blades. So he's got one knife drawn. So you want to get that. His... I don't even want to begin to start naming the weapon that he's carrying over his right arm. It is... It reminds me of some sort of crazy medieval Chinese weapon, but I have no idea what it could possibly be called. Um, but there's also some grenades hanging off the front of them as well that you're going to do with the uh, lead belcher as well. Flesh Tears Red was brought in for a few uh, extra flourishes, so that, um, I don't know, tall tassily bit on the end of the big part, and then all the handles of the knives I decided to go red as well to add that splash of colour. In their artwork, they only had one handle uh, red, but I decided to just go with all of them just to help them all tie together. I said this guy will be a knife connoisseur, so he might re-strap uh, them all himself. Retribute Armour was then brought in, and like I said, this guy worked for the Inquisition, so he's accessed everything that he could possibly want as goes armaments, and he chooses blades. So the blades on him are the things that are the most ornate. They've got a lot of gold trim, a lot of filigree, carved into the symbol of Aquilas. Um, so these things are probably fairly well made and fairly well maintained by him. So having them with a bit of bling is kind of cool. After that, we moved over to Balthazar Gold for the haft of the weapon he's carrying over his shoulder. And they decided to do that in a brassy color. That thing must be heavy. <laughs> but he's a death whirler, like a Katachan, so I'm sure it's nothing to him. So, taking my time and doing the haft and not hitting anything else. And then after that, we're going to move over to Nolan Oil and wash the entire miniature down. We did that little floating servo book thing as well um, when I painted up this gang. But same thing, same colors were used. Um, I'm sure you can pick out and use the same colors and get that thing painted up and wash Nolan Oil as well, which will finish off the seven members of the Inquisitorial Warband. And as a finished group of miniatures, they will look something like this, which I think looks pretty cool. A little bit of a close-in picture. I definitely think it works. I'm then going to show you um, some individual pictures of each and every one of the uh, members of the kill team. Starting with the Acolyte, which I think is the boss, basically. The Gunslinger. The Banner Man, I guess. I don't know, the Icon Bearer. I should really have learned the names. These will all have very distinctive names that I, I should have checked. The, the scribe. Gun servitor. 
death worlder and of course last but not least the little floating book thing well i hope you guys enjoyed this crazy painting Okay guys, and there we have it, an inquisitorial kill team, base coated, washed, based, and ready for the tabletop, in my opinion. I think they turned out quite nice for the amount of effort that I put in. Anyone would be able to sit down for an evening and bash out their kill team to this standard without any trouble whatsoever. I tried to keep it to a limited palette as well, just to save on the number of paints that you guys might have to buy in order to build and paint this kill team. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like. If you're interested in seeing me push these paint jobs even further um, and do a video on layering them up, please let me know. I would like to know if you would like to see me do that. Ask me any questions you want in the comments below. Make sure that you're subscribed. Only about a third of the people that watch my videos are subscribed. That's two thirds of you people that are not subscribed. So please take two seconds out of your day and hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end. I'll see you in the next video.